Big point that was for Manchester United and a big header from Casemiro. Not necessarily bought for goals, but he's got in the team and he's had some effects. Let's take a closer look at exactly uh, how he's done it with Jermaine Anno. And just uh, some numbers for you, first of all. Uh, in terms of individual duels, since he got in the team over 90 minutes in the Premier League, he has the highest rate. Uh, you can see the four uh, names on that particular list. In terms of the big six, since he got in the team as well, in terms of possession, Manchester United are only second, just to Chelsea. They've had more possession than City and Liverpool and Spurs and Arsenal. And in terms of possession won in the final third that we're going to take a closer look at uh, in a moment, since Casemiro got in the Manchester United team, uh, they've had the most of it out of the top six. Now, this is a position you, of course, know very well, Mr Hargreaves. What, what exactly has he brought to the party when we see numbers like that? He's brought everything really. I mean, you see the numbers there, and you think, you know, you think all those defensive ones. But he's brought leadership. You know, he's this man's won five Champions League. Steve, you know, he's a he's a special player. I think he's good under pressure. He helps them be better on the ball. We think about United when they were getting results under Ole and even under Tenaga start of the season against Arsenal, Liverpool. They played on the counter. Now with Casemiro in there. You know, you can play into him at all times. He's brilliant defensively. But I think what we're going to show is here, he's really good on the ball as well. Obviously, the header against Chelsea, that's, that's the icing on the cake. But some of these clips here um, that we're going to get into just show that this man has so much, uh, so many attributes that I think have gone a little bit unnoticed. And well, let, let, let's first of all remind everyone what the issue was in that area of the pitch before Casemiro got into the team? Well, a lot of the United fans were very critical of the fact that every manager seemed to play Fred and McTominay. In the end, they always played because I think they were, in the end, they always thought they were doing a job for the side. Look, I'm just going to highlight Fred there. When you play in this position in midfield, your job, he's a defensive midfield player, yeah? So, mm -hmm. basically, you need to be there when there's a turnover of possession. For whatever reason, Fred... I'm going to run this really slowly. Decides to gamble from the flick on Ronaldo. He thinks he's going to get it and receive it there. But he doesn't account for the fact they don't have the ball comfortably, Steve. Turnover of possession. Look at the position of Fred now. You would never see Casemiro in that position. Is that ill discipline? It's just a poor decision in a moment when, when you can't really be there. And if you just look at the space that he leaves, look at that space, Steve. It's a turnover of possession in your own half. You don't have the ball. Jermaine, you know, as a centre forward, you'd be dreaming... That space opens up there, and watch what happens. Watch where the ball goes. Watch where the ball goes, and basically in his position where he was. If he's there, none of this would have ever happened. Look, David De Gea makes a terrible mistake, and the ball goes in. But if Fred is there in that position in that moment, then that probably could have been avoided. Um, we've got another one here. This is obviously um, against Manchester City. And again, something very similar. You know, look. Keep an eye on Gundogan there. No, all these boys know they're basically setting up this attack. And look at Bernardo Silva. Runs out onto the wide area of the pitch. He's making this pitch really wide. And that's Scott McTominay in that position. There. What's he doing there? He's too far wide. You know, I was taught as a central midfield player, basically, I don't want to be outside these areas. Yeah? That's not my job. i got to mm. be in here. Look at Ericsson. He's not a defensive midfield player. He's a, he's a number 10. We're going to run this on real slowly that you can just see. Man City make this pitch this big because basically all they want to do is get this ball around the corner from Gundogan into Grealish there. Grealish is there. And watch what happens. This space here that United have to deal with. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, no. Ericsson's on his own in there. Casemiro would be in there, Jermaine, wouldn't so he? Is that, is that a lack of discipline, especially in that sort of position? Do you know what? Scott is a young guy. I was like the same. I was athletic and I was aggressive. I want to go press the ball. If you watch Casemiro, sometimes he just stands still. And we're just going to run this on a little bit more. Just going to run this a little bit back. Look at, look at Erling Haaland. They're building this attack because they know exactly what's going to come. You know, they're, they're all prepared for this. Ericsson's not sure. Do I go with De Bruyne? Do I go with Jack Grealish? And obviously, Scott is just in the wrong position. But when they get here, Jermaine, you obviously like the fact that Haaland, he's getting into the box there. Yeah, this is brilliant. And actually, when you watch it play from before, when he's actually saying to Jack Grealish, actually, come, stay on the ball, bring it, because all he's thinking about is seeing the defender's number and not coming to link play, but where can I be? When we're going to score goals, I need to get in there. Where I, he, he, he's not thinking about come to link play. There's an overload here, 2v1. All he's thinking about is where can I be to get into these areas? I like to call it the red zone. 
to score goals. And you watch it play in here now. And that's the thing. I think in this situation, Casemiro would be there to break up that. Obviously, this is, this is what we saw um, against Leicester, the fact. You, OK, you can win it there. But this is the thing I love. You know, we're just going to run it on real slow. Look at there. You know, he's got his head up. He's looking. He basically... And the thing that's really impressed me, Jermaine, is the fact, you know, he's able to hit these passes and get... Marcus Rashford, get Bruno Fernandes into these areas. That's the thing that surprised me, is his passing has what, what is, is, been really exceptional. We, we know defensively he's really good. I mean, Jermaine, this ball... I love this clip. Is, is, and, and this, I love this, is not necessarily what he's been associated no. with, rightly no. or wrongly, is it? No, this is special. For, for a centre-forward, speaking about Rashford here, again, these areas here. That's where you want to be as a centre forward. Just these small areas, just vacate these small areas, give yourself a chance to score. You talk about the great forwards over the years, the Ruban Nishtaroids. But uh, the ball's been set back here. But Steve, I mean, if you look at all the bodies that they've got back in here, you know, there's not much space for, for, for Casemiro to, to really hit. I'm going to run this real slow. He hits this with the outside of his right foot. I mean, that is picture perfect. And Marcus is going to score, hasn't he, Yeah, because it's in between the two centre halves. He's one of the best balls you'll see all weekend and that and, and obviously Rashford from his reaction you know he has to score because he's been put on a plate for him but what a cross this is this is one of my favorite clips actually we're just gonna we're gonna run this on real so look Casemiro's just setting this up initially yeah and we're gonna run this on real slow because basically Jermaine everybody pretty much 95% of players in the Premier League are gonna pass that back to the keeper or pass that to Lindelof. Which are good options, by the way. Which are really good options. Yeah. But obviously, if we're gonna run the sun real slow, look at Casemiro, vision, he knows exactly where this ball's gonna go and bang, and they're out. And that's a beautiful thing. Casemiro plays the ball forward. Fred and McTominay were good players, but they didn't play forward in some of these crucial moments. This is against Everton, this is class. I love this. And Jermaine, the thing we, you liked about this was the weight of the pass for Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, because you see here, where you want a ball is in here. Yeah. You don't want to break your stride because it gives the defender a chance to get back. And you see here, the weight of the pass is just perfect for Ronaldo to go on and, and do what he does best. Why, why is the weight so important? Because if you break your stride, then I feel like Ronaldo then, then it would be one on one. But at the minute here, it's like a race. So you want it in front of you so you can run onto it and get a touch and drive into the box and get a finish. See, this, this one is just a, it, Steve, it's just a real little, it's just a small little subtle one. But the fact that I mean, is Casemiro always wants the ball. And because he wants the ball, he's able to come and just set this out here and watch how quickly United can get up the pitch. One little ball out into Varane there, great ball into midfield, a little dummy, and you're out. And the, and the goal of football is to score. Get the ball to your attacking players that can make the difference. And I think Casemiro allows you to do that. This is what we've seen so far this season. Look, he's brilliant in here, turnover possession, and bang, get it to your attacking players. Look how quickly, when he gets a turnover possession, it almost leads to a goal. And obviously, I mean, this has probably been his standout moment, such an important moment. You know, he just gets on the end of a fabulous ball from Luke Shaw, and he's very, very good in the air. So I think in terms of impact, the team's unbeaten since he's come into the side. He's had an assist against Everton, he's had a huge goal against Chelsea, but he's been what we anticipated in terms of defensively, winning the ball, one of the best defensive midfield players in the Premier League, and he's won five Champions League. There's a reason for that, because this guy is so reliable. They're really individual qualities that, as I say, a lot of people didn't expect in certain areas of the pitch, but in terms of the team frame and setup and the way Eric Ten Hag wants to play, how's he helped that in recent weeks? Well, I th I th look, I think there's a lot of things that go into that. I think, look, if you think about United and the way they're setting up, I think this is basically how it's going to be. Obviously, you've got the, at times, you've got two centre-backs there. And Casemiro, because he's so good at playing this position, they trust him to be in there and, you know, if they turn over the ball. If you look at United attacking-wise, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because so he allows them to go and exactly. press like that. Exactly. He's, he, he's the trust, basically, in this. Whereas before, I don't think they, they trust they him as anyone. much. Because he's at the base there. They're allowed to go play a little bit more and attack. And obviously, it leads to the fact that you can get all these bodies in attacking. You know, six bodies, Jermaine, you know, that's a, that's a sig significant yeah, number. Yeah, it obviously gives you more chances of scoring goals when you can, you can have more bodies up the pitch and, and knowing that you've got someone behind you that can, obviously, that's got that awareness behind, and that's good behind the ball. I mean, this clip, when I think of Ten Hag and the way he plays football, 
I think this is what he, this is his blueprint. This right. is th this is how he sets up. So for me, he's thinking, right? I got my back. I got my back four in. That's my back four. And th and this is the guy, Casemiro, at the base of the mount midfield. But you look. The reason Ronaldo's not playing maybe is because of the fact maybe the press. Yeah. But if you look at this clip. Everybody's locked on. Everybody's quite high, and they're pressing. And it's just because of the fact, with Casemiro in the side, you know, you see him just shifting over. They're looking to squeeze the ball and press. And basically, wherever there's an opportunity where they can go and win it, look, everybody is in. Everybody's in the half of of Tottenham, and they're trying to get after them. Everybody's trying to look into squeeze and look. Casemiro, he's always shifting. He's always trying to find that moment. Where can I win the ball? Is that instinctive when you're playing there, Owen? Yeah, some guys just have a feel for it, you know, and, and I think he does. And again, you know, this is pretty much almost the, the exact same clip. You know, Casemiro is at the heart. Again, we've got that back four in there. Everybody's locked on, basically, because Jermaine, they want to get after people and they want yeah. to press because they know with him, he's a, he's a security blanket. And do you think playing this way, pressing higher, you create more chances? Because what happens is you, you end up winning the ball higher and then you create more chances and then you get sustained attacks. So when you've got someone like that in, you can afford to press higher. And then that's why I think Man United now, they can play with that sort of intensity and they'll create a lot more chances. The thing is as well, the goal is to get these guys the ball. The, these mm. guys that decide the games. Casemiro does that. So he gets the ball, see there, you know, he gets it into Bruno Fernandes, into Eriksen, into, into Rashford, into Martial. These guys that can help go and decide the game because basically you need the ball to get into the guys that decide the games, the Jermaine Defoe's and all these attacking players. And I think now with Casemiro at the base of that midfield, it's not a coincidence that United are unbeaten in the Premier League and I think they've got a blueprint going forward to success with him. Let's uh, let's get to the header because United kept going yeah. 94th minute Casemiro was brought in to do a different job obviously but he has got this in his locker. Yeah he, he can finish it you know he, he you know at Madrid he sometimes he gets into the box as well uh, against Everton he did it he missed now great timing great header it's difficult from that position it being in the air and then bringing that ball all the way back again to the other post and then uh, you know Goalkeeper tries to save it, but couldn't get his fingers around it, and then he goes in. So, a very, uh, a very good header, and a very important one as well. Delivery as well. Yeah, great delivery from Luke Shaw. I think he was on, it. He was on his hands and knees just before that ball came to him. He looked really tired towards the end of the game, but yeah, fantastic delivery. Really good header. Just to, the more I watch this, I do question the goalkeeper a little bit. No, it's not right in the corner. Oh, God, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a difficult one. I, I think if Mendy's in goal, you look at it, but I think he saves that just purely by the size of him. Um, I'm not sure what Franco thinks about that. We're going to find out because I'm going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, he's made a, you know, nearly a miracle because it wasn't easy to get that. The, the header was fantastic on the opposite side. He was moving to, to the near post and then he had to change the direction. And uh, you were saying before that normally, on that Good post, run. you go with his arm, but uh, if you go with his arm, you cannot push as much as if you mm. try to reach with the, with the opposite arm. That's the reason why the goalkeepers do that. And I think, uh, you know, he's done enough to touch it. Unfortunately for us, it wasn't, it wasn't enough.